Jai Shri Radhe. Here we are back again by the sweet will of our Gurudev. We will go on share quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita in Radharas Sudhanidhi. But first, let me offer my obeisances to all of you and take you lovingly in my arms and hug you. Jai Shri Radhe. Hey, Suni, everything fine? <laughs> yes, Radhe. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. So, Brindavan is absorbed. So, we actually continue from verse uh, 195. It was written 159, but this was my mistake. I made a change. So it's 195. And we will also hear the verse because the quotes here, um, they have some connection. So it's better to understand the whole thing when we read the verse. I keep some indescribable golden light that has red intoxicated eyes that destroys the bride of gold that is always eager for very sweet, romantic love sports and that is full of lovely, playful gestures and tender age in my heart. So this is the prayer of Srila Prabhupada Ananda Saraswati and this is his meditation meditating on a golden light. Commentary Sripad experienced the sweetness of the divine couple in his transcendental vision. When they are very close to each other, the divine couple increases the oceans of each other's sweetness and the hearts of the maidservants float along in all directions. on the waves of this ocean. So, when a body is indescribable beautiful, this is a statement from Uchwala Nilamani, it is called Madhuya or sweetness. And this can only be experienced by an advanced devotee. It cannot be expressed with words. Srila Goswami has written in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 2.5.132 Vyatitya Bhavana Vartnashya Bharabhu Riti Sat Uchvala that which is that which transcends the, the mental conception of a human being, which is the cause of great astonishment and which is experienced in the heart of those who are enlightened by Vishuddha Sattva or pure goodness 
is called rasa. Krishna is sweetness himself, but Sri Vrishabhanu's daughter drowns even him in the ocean of her sweetness. The sweetness of her love ever increases when she is with him. Now comes the statement from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yadyapi nirmara radhara sat prema darpana tatapi svachata tara patik shanik shama. Amara madhue yera nahi patite avakashi e da panera age nava nava rupa bashi. Man madhue rata prema donhe huta kori kshane kshane bhate donhe kehu nahi hari. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Although the mirror of Radha's true love is spotless, its clearness increases at every moment. There is no end to the increase of my sweetness, but in front of that mirror it assumes always new forms. My sweetness and Radha's love thus always increase each other and no one suffers defeat. So here is underlined what is actually happening in this verse. They are increasing each other's sweetness when they are together. Radharani's moon-like face is shining even more bright than usually. And this increases when Krishna sees that and enjoys that. This increases his own sweetness. Because Krishna may be sweet, but without Radha, there is a shadow on his sweetness, so to say. Or it's not really full power enlightened, this sweetness. Because actually the aggregate of his sweetness is Radharani herself. And when he is together with Swamini, then he even himself finds no limit to his own sweetness, like he is saying here. Although the mirror of Radha's true love is spotless, its clearness increases at every moment. There is no end to the increase of my sweetness, but in front of that mirror it assumes always new forms. So Krishna is telling here, I know my sweetness, I am fully aware, but when I am standing in front of the mirror of my beloved, of Radha, this mirror seems to be more and more clear, although it is already spotless. And I, looking at myself, I cannot understand that my sweetness is taking always new forms then. How it's possible? How it's possible that Krishna's sweetness is getting new forms always? So 
So I think this is a good question for our Gurudev. Okay. So then maybe someone wants to share something on this topic, how it's possible that Krishna's sweetness, already endless, taking always new forms in front of the mirror, of that mirror, the mirror of his sweetness is Radharani's love. I think it is the nature of the spiritual energy of of Shrimati Radhika's energy that she is ever increasing love and that's why she is the only one that can really bind Krishna fully with her love that is her ever increasing how do you say which word to choose Binding devotion. And that is so attractive also for all living entities that we are craving for this love also. <laughs> But of course, it's amazing that Krishna is also craving for this. <laughs> so I remember also once in the hidden path of devotion. Our Gurudev Narayan Maharaj, he was explaining this, that how is it that Krishna at the same time he knows everything, he's all-knowing, at the same time he forgets that he is the Supreme in Vrindavan only, he gets this, that he forgets, you know, that he is the Supreme Controller. And we have heard the last weeks Again and again, that Gurudev and all the devotees in the morning classes, they were explaining the difference between the controller and the absolute truth. So when Krishna is outside of Vrindavan, he has to take care of many uh, things, of all the universes and all his expansions, they take care of it, Vishnu especially. But when he is Rajendra Nandana, he becomes helpless, a small cowherd boy playing the flute with a beautiful, you know, Vrindavan, having all these loving Rajabasis around him who all bind him with their love. But Shimati Radhika's love, her mirror, you know, the mirror of her heart, is so unlimited that he is always again and again losing himself in her love. And that is so very attractive, that she is losing also herself in his love, and he is losing himself in her love. Daddy. Thank you very much. So Ananda Das Babaji is giving a description here from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 2598. Rati takes shelter of sweetness and so and thus reveals Krishna and so. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. gone back again someone wanted to share something or not because i heard something but then it break 
Okay. If, then please try again. Rati takes shelter of sweetness and so. Radhe Radhe Gaurabhaniji. Oh, Radhe Radhe. Our okay. Maharaj. Can I share it with Jayananda can always share. So, uh, you are saying the mirror and why Radha Mohan, Radha Krishna meet and then dubbing increase. That is question, huh? some kind of. And my feeling like this. In the sea, if we go, you know, if we want to bring us, try to bring catchers to, to what is it in English, bring to in our place, then after some time, water coming to go. And then if we want to know, you, wave, wave, you go and then we push and then we come back. So loving nature is interesting. Bhakti nature is interesting. If we give something, then more love is coming. So Radha want to give something. Actually, whatever Radhika do is all pleasure for Mohan, Krishna. And also Krishna also same time he wants to please Radhika. So, and then they want to give something and then more love is coming. And then they want to give more, more love to each other. So this is nature of bhakti. This is nature of love. In this material world, everybody want to take something, want to take money. Then we are, our money was taken. This material world, is nature is exploit was taken by spiritual world, especially Brindavan. Nature is giving. So Vaikuntha planet is is good, but Aishwarya mood is so so strong. Therefore, giving nature is very small. I want to take something from Narayan, but in Buraja, completely different. All Brajavashi want to give something to Krishna. And the gopis, they want to give everything to Krishna. But the Radharani's case is, say, she, you know, her dedication is, dedication is so pure and so complete. Why? Because Mahababa's personification. And uh, she is like a Prema Chintamani. Whatever Krishna desire, Radhika could fulfill. So I think this is could maybe explain this loving nature. If we give something, then more love is coming. This reciprocation is called, you know, Bhakti and loving relationship. So therefore, we need relationship and we need to give everything to, to our Ishta, Ishta Devi. <coughs> so therefore, Guru Dev many times mentioned Go Bardam, increasing our feeling because love and feeling is almost the same ones. If more feeling means more giving, then more feeling is coming. This feeling reciprocation is called like Baba Bhakti or like say Prema Bhakti. And in Radhika's case, this Prema is most amazing way. He called Mahababa and Mohan and Madana meeting in okay. separation and meeting and meeting separation. Thank you so much, Jainanda Maharaj.
A wonderful explanation here. So in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu it is stated Rati takes shelter of sweetness and so and thus reveals Krishna and so and when this is experienced Rati also increases again. Like Jayananda explained nicely the waves are coming to the sand. The sand is giving a little bit of itself, sand, into the ocean. And then waves again are coming. So it's an exchange of love. Constant increasing. Because the ocean of Radha's Mahabhav is shoreless. So it's not like in the material world. The sand could not be taken always because at one point it would be empty. <laughs> but Krishna and Radharani are not limited. So the ocean increases, it's a shoreless ocean. It gets deeper and broader and it gets more and more wilder. The waves are getting wilder, bigger, with more force, more power. That's the rati which increases. So Krishna is giving himself more and more because he has to do, because Radharani wants to serve him more and more, so he has to give himself more and more. And by this way, he gets sweeter more and more. And so also everything is increasing again and again. And Sripad, in his kinga reform, has attained the great fortune of tasting that sweetness and that savor has extended the ocean of his prema. So that's an interesting point. The point of Sripad in his kinga reform So Sripat, in his kinka reform, is extending the ocean of his prema, like Swamini herself. Why? Because he is living on the mercy of Swamini. And her mercy is also increasing every moment towards her beloved, giving him more and more taste, and in the same time towards the kinkery, giving her more and more of her own feelings. Because of Bhavulasrati, The Kinkari and Swamini are same in feelings and the mercy is coming to the Kinkari. So her ocean of Brahma is also extending, limitless. Especially when she sees Srimati's lovely movements. He says, Lasanava Vayashriya Lalita Bangi Lila Mayam. Her tender age is so beautiful and her 
playful movements are so lovely. When a tender girl makes playful gestures with her limbs and enchanting movements with her eyebrows, it is called Lalita Alankara. The emotional ornament named Lalita. The maidservant sees these lovely movements in all of Swamini's pastimes. In all of Swamini's pastimes. That's a wonderful point for meditation. In every Leela, Radharani is moving in that way. Her movements, so, so wonderful in her tender age. Radhe Radhe Gauravani. Radhe Radhe Suniti. I would like to say that, of course, I have never seen Srimati Radhika from face to face. I try to come closer to her. But what I noticed about the movement of the beautiful limbs and that the maidservants are so much uh, absorbed in that, so that they themselves, they become also reflections of these beautiful movements. And what I have noticed with Rasika Vaishnavas, I like to watch their movements <laughs> because they are reflections of this beauty. Even, you know, when we look at our Prabhupada, our Shila Prabhupada, how he was moving graciously, how he was smiling graciously. I never met Shila Prabhupada. But when we see the videos and all these movements, it is so elegant. How can this be? This can only be because they are maidservants reflecting these elegant and shining movements of Swamini's movements. And I saw this also in Narayan Maharaj. And I see this also in our Gurdi, Sadhu Maharaj. I like to watch how he's walking. <laughs> Maybe it sounds really stupid, but it reminds me of Swamini's gait. It is, it is very elegant and it's very um, attractive. So I feel I am in the right place with the right dasis. Yes, it sounds crazy like a pagal. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. And uh, so Suniti did, Suniti did uh, make a very good point. I forget which Shastra, but it is say, uh, if we glorify, then that person's quality become infuse us. If we criticize someone, then that person's bad quality infuse us. So, like say, like you mentioned, Prabhupada, our Narayan Maharaj, and you know our Guru Dev Sadhu Maharaj, they are always glorifying, always meditating, you know, Ishta Devi. So therefore, automatically their quality, you know, infuse. In other words, they are in the pleasure giving potency. They are not working by the external energy. They are working by internal energy, pleasure-giving potency. So therefore, they are completely controlled by pleasure-giving potency. That's my, my feeling. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, wonderful. Like always, 
Jayananda Maharaj always wonderfully explains. So the next quote I found in Ch uh, Radharasa Sudhanidhi from Chaitanya Charitamrita is in verse number 196. The amorous expertise of Radha and Madhava. So, in the commentary of Srila Ananda Das Babaji, which is giving the headline, The Amorous Expertise of Radha and Madhava, he's writing, Sri Radha is the transformation of Sri Krishna's love. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikriti says Sri Swarup Damura. The word Vikriti means the boiled up essence. Just as the boiled up essence of milk is Kshira, sweet rice or barpi milk sweet as a result of this boiling two bodies grow from the deep lake of one soul strung together in one heart again ek atmaniya rasa Punatamit Yagadhe Ekasu Sankra Titan Eva Tanu Tvayam Nau Brema Samputa. Although they are strung together in one heart, Sriman, beautiful Krishna, is Priya, lover, and Srimati beautiful Radhika, is Priya, beloved. For the sake of relishing transcendental rasa, now comes the quote, Rata Krishna eka atma dui dehadari, anyonye vilase rasa asvadana kori. Chaitanya Charit Amrita. Adi Lila. The great poet Kanapura wrote in Alankara Kashtuba 5.33 Anyone who says that I am your beloved or you are my beloved is just raving. Alas, anyone who says that you are my life and I am also your life is speaking nonsense. It is also not nice to say that I am yours and you are mine. O Radhe, all such statements are improper, for they indicate a difference between the two of us. Words like you and me are only an illusion. So I think this is a very interesting statement and I would like to hear what you feel about this. Especially I would like to hear from Gurudev, but if he is in the mood of just hearing, then also from others. 
Certainly. Certainly. We don't know when they do the past time. Sometimes Krishna is doing, sometimes Radhika is doing, sometimes Manjuri is doing. So Chaitanya, they don't want to know you and me, they are together. They are one soul, two body. Well, Two souls become in one body, that is Satan. What I feel, sharing. Thank you so much, Gurudev. Maybe someone else want to share feelings on that? I just think it's such a beautiful meditation. This oneness and difference of Radha and Mohan, it is endless actually. And Gurudev explained so nicely when they come together, when two, you know, two bodies become one soul again. This is our dear Chaitanya, this is Krishna learning. How to feel Srimati Radhika's Mahabhav because he's a foreigner to this. And uh, there are so many flavors, but actually they are endless. They have no beginning and no end. Like, just like the Ra Radha and Mohan's Leela have no beginning and no end. And um, meditating about this will get me out of the duality. Because there is no duality. And that, I think, is so purifying for me as a conditioned soul. Because I just, it's difficult for me to come out of duality. I always think in beginning and ends. I have a material body now. It has a beginning and an end. And so on and so on. All relations, they have a beginning and an end. And that's actually why when we come to this planet Earth, why we suffer also, because everything has a beginning and an end. But in Radha and Mohan, in Chaitanya, there is no beginning and no end. It is eternal, and that is what all souls are yearning for, that eternal relationship. And now we are so lucky that we have been given this gift and yes I know devotees they told me personally in sharings that I was missing the oneness in bhakti because you know they are all coming from backgrounds also of different different philosophies also and it's often about the oneness like many people say, yeah, yeah, we are all one with God. <laughs> but how are we one? And how are Radha and Krishna when they are one? So in Chaitanya, we have the perfect inspiration. So when they come in contact, and I'm sorry, Gurudev, it's all glorification of your Gurudev, actually. When they come in contact with Rasika Vaishnava, then this oneness also is felt because in that realm of rasa there is you know the oneness of radha and mohan that manjaris always want to achieve and assist that they become one again when they feel separation manjaris try to arrange everything so that they can meet and not only meet in person but also meet 
in memories, in the remembering of the Leela, remembering in songs, remembering in touch, in all the different spiritual senses. And that realm is so uh, attractive for us conditioned souls. And we are lucky now because when Radha and Mohan have become one in this Kali Yuga and appeared on this planet Earth, they are calling us to serve them in this beautiful oneness of their love. That's why we are so proud also to be, you know, devotees in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition and to be able to learn about this more deeply and more deeply. So devotees are also very happy when they feel uh, not only oneness is Maya, <laughs> like merging into Brahman or something. No, oneness of Radha Mohan is beautiful, it's very attractive, and it's very fulfilling. <laughs> that I just want to share. It's so, so great. Thank you also for the subject. I love this verse. <laughs> A wonderful explanation. So nice, Suniti. So Guru, they said they are all one. They are always one, together. One soul in two bodies. And I had the thought, actually, Mahabhav wouldn't be complete, perfect, if it wouldn't be like that. If it wouldn't bound them perfectly forever together. then Mahabhav wouldn't be perfect. It wouldn't be the highest. Because these persons, although from one soul emanating, they are two, but actually again coming together by the perfect bound of Mahabhav, of the highest feelings like Madan and Mohan. Mahabha. So in the feeling of separation or in the feeling that they are together, they are always perfectly bound together by the highest Sambandha. Because the string of Sambandha is Mahabha. And there Mahabha is the highest, so it's the highest string. It has to be like this. That's why it's nonsense to say I am yours and you are mine and all this because like Suniti said, this actually is turning to uh, duality. But this Mahabhav actually is the power which makes everything one. You may have thousand different philosophies, but if you inject in all these people whatever they they for their philosophy is Mahabhav, they all come together and this is what is happening in Vrindavan. So and I was, again also, I, I would like to, sorry, Gaurawani, I would like to use uh, this opportunity, this what you explained so nicely to glorify our Gurudev and what he has brought to us, because uh, it was it was for many many uh, years it was not possible in the Gaudiya Vaishnava devotees to unify uh, uh, you know the different different philosophies in the oneness of love. It was not possible because we were all separating. We were so uh, neophyte and so immature that we always separate those who were worshipping Shiva, you know, those who were worshipping Buddha. But now we understand this, how they all connected in this, you know, desire to experience endless love and also to worship. We are not, we are not so proud that we need to condemn anyone. We can feel in all the devotees of the different 
uh, you know, ishtas that they have, we feel that there is some desire to love and desire to be purified and desire to worship. And so I'm very happy about this. And also my Goda Sundara, he was so uh, unhappy for many years because nobody could combine Jesus and the bhakti of Jesus with a uh, bhakti of Radha and Mohan. So we are very lucky because our dear Gurudev helped us to overcome this duality. That is very important and to see the oneness and to see the souls traveling through many, many different possibilities and it's all coming from Radha Mohan, it's all coming from Chaitanya. Sorry, I talk too much, but I have to go again and now I just bubble around a little bit in your association so that my day will be purified and lucky. Radhe. Suniti, so you're not bubbling. Mahabhav is streaming out of your mouth, that's it. This is the mercy of Gurudev. Gurudev is injecting Mahabhav in anyone. And actually this is the Sambandha, which is acting in that way that they all come together. And they all, in the beginning at least, try to love each other and more and more really love each other. So this is actually the mercy which is coming down from our Swamini to us through the Parampara and injected by Gurudev. So he is actually giving us the protection from the material influence because if you have Mahabhav injected all these material things they have to stay away they cannot really get you anymore maybe here and there try but not really get you anymore they just say bye bye all aspects. They may come again and say bye-bye, but then after that they stay away. At least this is my experience through the mercy of Gurudev, that every little aspect is saying goodbye. I'm doing nothing, I'm just sitting here, try to be from some use and try to stay with all of you. And the rest is really happening. So we just have to stay in the stream of Mahabhav. And this will wash and clean our heart. It's really working like that. I'm amazed. More and more amazed. Like Krishna is amazed when he's standing in the front of this mirror. I'm also amazed. I'm also standing in front of the mirror of Mahabhav. So this is the mercy. This is actually the Audarya of our Swamini. Flowing to us. Her endless mercy flowing towards her beloved, and in the same time flowing towards her kinkaris. And we all could be her kinkari. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give it to everyone, every single soul. So it's just a question that we open our heart just a little bit as much as we can to let the injection inside or just go to Gurudev and say, here please inject <laughs> done this is what he always tells to everyone isn't it 
come to Brindavan for some days. <laughs> he has the injection always ready there, you know. Just come there for some days. <laughs> So this is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu handed to us in different ways. Like Suniti said, from Prabhupada who made the foundation and took himself, of course, a big part, the biggest part, <laughs> because he got the mercy from his guru. And he made such a wonderful seva. But still, it's going on actually. And this is actually another wonderful thing. Like Suniti said, everything is brought together in one. The different moods are actually coming together. The preaching mood and the mood of bhajan in one place for yourself. These two moods, Bhajan Anandi and Goshti Anandi, for so many hundreds of years not possible to bring together, but now they are coming together by the injection of Mahabhav. And really, this is, for me, it was really one of the most amazing points that these two lines who seem to be completely different are actually now coming together and giving Radharani's mercy to everyone like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted it. Yes, Gauravani, and I want to share one thing more about this subject. Nowadays, I can say that many devotees, they struggle from this um, seeming contradiction of, of chanting and doing the service in the temple and at the same time having a life, you know, where they can uh, earn their income or, you know, care for their families or, you know, this seems to be so hard. But also, again, this by the mercy of Gurudev, he took this all contradictions away on this and these fears away that we can, you know, we can be in this life, we can be in this world and be completely at the same time devotees and dasis. It's a matter of our inner consciousness because I, I want to say that in the temple, why they struggle because all the devotees they are hiding in their rooms and in their temple, they don't like to go out and they have no, you know, they feel fearful of the of the world and of the people in a way, you know. But there is no no need to be fearful to go out and have a life and have a family. And this also good if you took away all these fears and all these misconceptions and you open a new bhakti to us, really. We don't need to be secluded somewhere hiding. We are we are now by your mercy we have learned how to integrate different aspects of our lives. And not only think I'm a devotee when I'm in the temple or I have to be, you know, this and that, all these conceptions, these material conceptions of who I am, and this especially coming out of the concepted uh, ang, a narrow like um, tight jacket of Vaidhi Bhakti and I I have been now invited to many devotees houses sometimes I go in the evening and we do kirtan and we share and I just feel and I want to share this with you all how much there is still to be you know get rid of the fear and come into the feeling on and uh, not be afraid of Raga Bhakti, Raga Nuga Bhakti. Just enter, you know, by the mercy of Prabhupada to realize what Gurudev has given us to understand how Prabhupada is Rasika. And he has 
you know, given us the pleasure, giving potency as our home. Even in Bhagavad Gita, at the very last sentence. And living in this makes us fearless and makes us more and more coming out of the duality. And even if there are some difficult times, it will be overcome again and again by the mercy of Gurudev, Vaishnavas and Swamin. That I just wanted to share because I can see there is now very big need of devotees who explain this and share this to others who are stuck in different, different conceptions of what does it mean to be a devotee. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you so much, Saniti. Yes, that's uh, such an important point. So actually, before it wasn't possible to even think to unite all this. Okay, okay. Why not? She wants to share something. But nowadays, it's possible. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Explain what you meant when you said just a few minutes ago. About Who's there? We, now there is Bajana Nandi and Goshti Nandi. What did you mean by that? Actually, I, I could not hear the beginning of your question. I'm sorry. Please, could you uh, uh, just Can speak you hear again? Me? Can you hear? Not so clear. Yeah, um, not so clear. Yeah. A few minutes ago, you you said that there is Bajananandi and Goshtianandi. What did you mean by that? Like Prabhupada was in the mood of Goshtianandi, so to actually spread the Sankirtan mission, go out and preach. I mean, he, he even said preaching. He really said, we will preach Krishna consciousness. This was his mission. So that's the mood of a Goshtianandi. And a Bhajananandi just wants to sit and have self-realization in meditation, in actually peace of Brindavan usually. So Prabhupada actually could also do that because he was in Brindavan already. And actually he was already in this mood, but then because of the wish of his guru, he left and he went to America. And if he wouldn't do that, then there would be Krishna consciousness nowhere in the world because so many tried before him and were not so successful. But he was actually preaching this in the whole world. So this is actually clearly Goshtianandi. He went out to preach that. But then people I know from the past were actually adopting this. And they said, yes, I'm a Goshtianandi, I will go and preach. So, and the other said, no, 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 I, 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 I'm not going out. I, I will just do my bacha for myself and get self-realization for myself, peacefully. I will go to Bendavan, sit there and chant all the time. So actually, Param Gurudev, if you would see it from outside, you could say he's clearly a Bhajananandi. But what he did, he gave the power to Gurudev and he said, you have to travel around the world. And I know Gurudev told us that he was not satisfied with that. He was thinking, I want to stay here, do my bhajan. I want to be a bhajan anandi. But he actually is sending me out. But Gurudev actually never lost this move. 
that he wanted to go deeper, that he wanted to do bhajan. So he is clearly actually bringing these two moods together. He actually had contact with Prabhupada. He got the mercy from Prabhupada. He actually was sent by his Gurudev to Prabhupada. So we can see that actually Param Gurudev had a very broad vision. He stayed Bhajananandi, but in the same time he was actually giving instructions and in the same time he actually opened that way to the whole world in that way that he was sending Gurudev outside around the world. So for me this is amazing. Still, it's amazing. But actually, this amazement is connected because this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood. And I'm also still amazed because by the mercy of Gurudev, I understood who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is not Krishna. Of course, Krishna is inside because of his wish that he actually wants to see Radharani's love for him and so on. So the wishes he had inside. But actually, he is Radharani. Much more Radharani because Radharani's mood and her complexion and special mood of Radharani. In her Brahma Vaichitya, when she is forgetting herself completely and is reunited by the highest form of Mahabhav, Madanakya Mahabhav, and in the same time Muhan Mahabhav, because she feels separated. And in this mood, she brings these two Mahabhav forms to us, and Radharani and Krishna together are coming here. So we can see actually this is everything together in one person, the full mercy package. And in this mood, of course, we can understand that it has to happen like this. It had to happen that this Bhajananandis and Goshtianand moods are actually coming together in one. But no one else but Radharani could do that. Her mood is the driving force. Could you hear and is this uh, answer satisfying or do you have some other points or? Ready, ready? Ready, ready? Yes, thank you so much, Prabhu. Yes, very satisfying. And we see it's not only Prabhupada, but our Gurudev Sadhu Maharaj also was fully in bhajan and preaching at the same time and still is thank you for that very wonderful 
question. It's actually a very interesting point. Because what, what we actually just right now experience is completely amazing. And yes, it was never there before. It's Unat Uchvalaras, Uchvalaras, which was never there before, but it also has so many other aspects which they were never there before. And this uniting aspect, for example, is so amazing. Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui Deha Dari Anyon Ye Vilasera Asadana Kori Chaitanya Charit Amrita so the next quote I found of Chaitanya Chart Amrita in Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi is in verse number 200. And this is so wonderful because it's connected what we were just talking about. <laughs> the title is Sri Radha Love Personified. Because all that what happened could only happen because Sri Radha is Love Personified. All glories to the Queen of Brindavan, who is the heart of all the clever girls, who is like love personified, and who is the spotless treasure of Sri Krishna, who is himself the essence of an ocean of rasa. And like we just said, without the love of Radharani, this could never be established. We can see that without Radha in a spiritual sky, nothing is really possible. Like the Rasa dance without her, not possible. So I will read the commentary of this, because then the statement will come soon. Srimad has finished decorating the Dreisting Kunja. Srimati has finished decorating the Dreisting Kunja. And now simply waits for Krishna's arrival. When the appointed time passes, and Krishna still did not show up, the ocean of Srimati's anxiety increases. Finally, she is unable to remain patient, and she pitifully laments. Alas, Hari did not show up in the forest on the point of time, on the appointed time. If I cannot serve him, then all my youthful beauty is useless. 
Alas, of whom shall I take shelter now? Now that I have been deceived by my friend's words, The maidservant sees Sri Radha as love personified. Sri Shiva Goswami says in Priti Sandharma, Ladini Sara Vritti Vishesha Swarup Bhagavati Priti. Love of God is the essence of God's energy of bliss. And Chaitanya Charit Amrita says, Ladinira Sara Brema, Brema Sara Bhav, Bhavera Paramakashta Nama Mahabhav, Mahabhava Svarupa Rata Takurani. The essence of the pleasure energy is Brema. The essence of Brema is Bhava. And the highest stage of bhava is named Mahabhava. Goddess Radha is the very form of that Mahabhava. The energies like Ladini are one with God's form in a formless way but the same assume forms as their presiding goddesses and appear externally as the Lord's concerts. Like Lakshmi Sita Rukmini and Radha. Rasa Sinto Shri Krishnasya Vimala Sara Rupa Sampat Eva. She is the spotless essence of the ocean of Rasa. And who is that ocean of Rasa? Sri Krishna. She is the very wealth of Krishna's heart, as Krishna himself admits in Gita Govinda. here in verse number 200. So maybe someone wants to comment on this or give some feelings or correct me. So we can see without Radharani, what we were talking about, that everything is coming together in love. This is not possible without love in person. Because duality is gone now. There is no more duality. In Mahabhav, there is no duality. There is only Lila. It seems like duality. But it's not. It's just for the Lila to make it more interesting. Like when Radharani is in Man. It's not that one day she wants to serve Krishna and on the other day she doesn't. No, it's like one day she wants to serve Krishna in that way and another day she wants, or in the next moment even, she wants to serve in another way. 
give more taste and then again more taste and then again more taste and she is the perfection of love in person the perfection of seva in person so only by her grace only by her mood Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could give us what he gave us. And only by begging for her mercy we can get a body which is able to carry her feelings because she is the complete sumnum bonum of Sevarasa and we want to be a part of her Sevarasa so only by her grace and only by a person who already received that grace we can join in that energy so we can clearly understand that without Radha it wouldn't be possible Without her, no rasa dance in Vrindavan. Without her, we could not get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that form. Jai Shri Radhe So the next quote I found in verse number 201 And this will, think, will make the thing complete now, actually, for today. First 201 is, I offer my obeisances unto Hari, who is the very form of deep rasa, who is gladdened by a great festival of amazing pastimes who wears a beautiful crown of peacock feathers and who rolls at Radha's foot soles. And this is what makes the kinkari really happy. I praise this form of Krishna who is rolling at my Swamini's lotus feet. This form of Krishna I praise. And in the commentary, Srila Ananda Das Babaji gives different kind of quotes here from 
Uch Valenila Mani. Sneha comes forward from Pranaya and thus Man is attained. Sometimes also Man comes forward from Sneha and culminates into Pranaya. Hence, Pranaya and Man are interactive. And this is actually describing what we were just talking about. Sometimes Swamini wants to serve in that way and sometimes in another way and makes her service sweeter and sweeter and more ecstatic and even more ecstatic. And sometimes in this way from Pranaya Man is appearing and sometimes Sneha is culminating in Pranaya and Man comes forward from Sneha. Hence Pranaya and Man are interactive. So they are serving each other. Depends on the Rasa. And our Swamini is completely expert. Like she's cooking for her beloved. She's serving different kind of dishes. And sometimes a chutney is serving some other dish. Maybe rice with sachi is even more intense together with the chutney. But sometimes also something sweet could be even more better with a sweet chutney. So in this way she is expert in offering different varieties and the most wonderful thing is that the kinkeries they are always there and they can always see and feel Swamini's expertise and serve her expertise. There is no sweetness greater than or equal to that of Krishna. He is the origin of the origin and the origin of all the forms of Vishnu that descend from Vaikuntha, and his sweetness cannot be found in Lord Narayan. That can be clearly seen in Lord Narayan's beloved Ram, Lakshmi, who is worshipped by all the chaste women. Strongly desiring Krishna's sweetness, she gave up all sense gratification, took firm vows and performed severe penance. Setu Madhuya Sara Anya Siti Nahitara Tinu Madhuyati Gunakani Arasat Prakase Taradatta Gunabase 
Yahoyoto Prakashe Kaya Jani Chaitanya Charit Amrita Majalila 21 Krishna is the quint essence of sweetness and there is no other perfection above it. He is a jewel mine of all qualities like sweetness. He has given his qualities to all other divine manifestations. In this way, we know all the attractivities of the divine manifestations. But, here comes the sweet but. So far, for Krishna. <laughs> but Radha steals even the heart of Hari. He who steals the hearts of everyone in this world. No matter what Krishna tries to please his angry beloved, nothing helps. So he decides to take shelter of the means called Nati or offering obeisances. Sri Rupa Goswami writes in Uchwala Nilamani, Sama Veta Kriya Dhana Natyupiksha Rasantarai. The seven means to break the peak of the beloved are appeasement, separation, worship, giving a present, offering obeisances, ignoring or taking shelter of another mellow. Kevalam dainyam alampya patapato natyamata ibit humbly falling at the beloved's feet is called nati hari holds the feet of his beloved on his head and humbly prays o oh, prema mai please forgive me The maid servant sees how the peacock feather crown of the universal enchanter rolls at Swamini's lotus feet. Aha! What an enchanting beauty! How sweetly transcendence falls at the feet of the pinnacle of love. The maidservant is completely enchanted. The maidservant calls Hari Rasagana Mohan Murtihi, the very form of deep rasa. The Upanishads say Rasa by Saha. He, the Supreme, is Rasa. And Krishna is again the Rasagana Mohanmurti, the form of condensed Rasa. Rasa Raj Sri Krishna is most enchanting when he falls at Radha's lotus feet. This sweetness cannot be relished, though unless one accepts the mood of Sri Radha's maidservants. Manjari Bhav. Jai Jai Sri Radhe Jai Jai Sri Radhe Jai Jai Sri Radhe
Thank you, Gurudev, for giving your loving blessings always to use this useless mouth. And thank you all that you are here sharing. So, so beautiful explanation, beautiful. I cannot believe this, how you select from this place. <laughs> wow. You are a researcher. You research Chaitanya Chaitanya and others. Wow, it's rare to find. Everything just your mercy. I mean, just. I'm going to be accepted your classes. <laughs> thank you, Gurudev, for your mercy. And thank you all other Vaishnavis, Vaishnavas, or... It is very serious. It is. I see a very critical situation. I don't know what is going to happen. All other moments, but it is a critical. Nothing. So little. I'm disturbed also because of that. Some calls are coming. <laughs> I'm sure it will happen the best because you are there. Marcia, you are what will happen is good. Never happen bad. How does it be down here? So, Rade Rade.